Good day, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> right now, talk about the conflicts. Can the conflicts between Crips and Bloods ever be resolved? Uh, look at all the conflicts going on between Crips versus Crips, Crips versus Bloods. And I was wondering, could they ever be resolved? Because they've been going on for so long. Let's, let's, let's look at it this way. Let's look at it this way. Crips versus blood has been going on for at least 47, 48 years. Consistently. There have been little laws, but consistently. 46 years. 47. Uh... One of the biggest Crip versus Crip gang warfare has been going on for 45 years, a shooting war, 45 years. Now, within that 45 years, let's just say within a 48 year span, how many innocent people have been killed? How many young brothers have been killed? How many young blacks, young sisters, been killed? Hmm. And as I was thinking about it, let me do this. Let me say this. There, the United States has never been in a conflict with any country combatively, consistently for more than 10 years. And that was in the Vietnam War, where they were on the front line for 10 years. War, World Two. People think we was over there. The United States wasn't involved with it for four and a half years. The Korean War. The United States was involved combatively for only three and a half years closer to four look it up you, you look it up research it Crips and Bloods <clears throat> excuse me Crips and Bloods 47 48 years hmm hmm and in the Vietnam War there were a total of what was it 10 7,428 blacks killed within that 10 year span. Within that 48 year span, how many blacks you think been killed? And how many innocent people you think been killed? You know, it's a fact. You know, they collect all the data and they do all their little research, but I don't need, I don't need nobody to tell me I could take the eye test. You could see. Especially in Southern California, you could see. M more than not, a gang member does not get killed or shot. 63% of the time, another person is the victim which they consider them collateral damage, which is nothing more than a military term for unintended targets. Meaning they were innocent people. They weren't targeted. They were innocent. But so yeah, you do the math. You do the math. Maybe we've already killed the next, I mean the first Obama, the next Malcolm X, the next Dr. Martin Luther King, the next Rosie Parks. We'll never know the next Thurgood Marshall. We'll never know. You know, it has to, you know, our conflicts with each other has to come to an end sometime. And what better time than now? And it's not like I'm always going, I'm always going to say, I'm not telling you to disavow your gang, no. Disavow the violence right now. Love where you're from. But disavow the violence. And man, you know, 
too many of us, too many of us have been killed senselessly and unwarrantedly. Hmm. Not just here in Cali, but look across the eastern United States. What they call Chicago Shy Rock. Come on, man. Come on. You know, and this is this is this is true. This I bullshit y'all not. This is true. I was in, I was somewhere and I was talking to these Kathy's castles from Chicago. And they were saying, shit, the re reason they doing all the murders in uh in, sh in Chicago, they trying to keep up with LA. You know, now I'm like, damn, to myself, damn. Here's another group of blacks trying to keep up with another group of young blacks, but in a negative way, nefarious way. See who can get the most murders. What state can get the most murders? What city can get the, the most murders? That don't make no damn sense. But, hmm, it's a culture that was bred by the first generation. And that brings me into who caused this violence and its perpetuation. As I said before, there was two entities. I'm going to talk about the first entity, the one who started it. Uh, the blame has to be placed squarely, squarely, 100% on the shoulders of the original founding members of Crips, East Side, West Side, and Compton. It falls on our shoulders. Because Crips got so big, they become the, hey, the bully on the block. Let's keep it hundred. Keep, become the bully on the block. And from Crips come what? Bloods. Crips are the reason Bloods are around today. They forced another game. Because when we started on the West Side, we didn't have any enemies. We created our enemies. We created, we made, we made the creation of Inglewood chain gang. There was a gang called the Brims. They was already down there. And we started, hey, started in on them. But they wasn't called Bloods then, they just called Brims. And uh, first generation is the cause. The first generation. And you know what? And it all start, and it's ironic how it all started and why it all started. It really the violence the Crips exhibited towards other young non-combative black youth started with when Crips started imposing a self-dress code. And at the same time they come out with this dress code. What was the fashion trend? Waistline leather coats, maxi leather coats. That was the tr fashion trend. And it's ironic. One part of Crips dress, what the one of the main parts was a waistline leather coat. Here you go. Godfather hat. Waistline leather coat. White t-shirt. Khakis or Levi's and biscuits, accessories, suspenders, earring and left ear, or in a cane if you want it. That was Crip dress. And when Crips self imposed that dress, it was on the cracking. If you was a non combative view and you was a non Crip or you was a non affiliated and you had a waistline on, oh, come on up out of it, partner. That's what I, that's where it all started. That's how it all started. All the violence started. Crips, first generation. That's the violence really all started with taking of leather coats from black youth. It really it just it escalated just and then once they start taking the coats, yeah, you know they hey, they feel emboldened now. 
Chris Redfield is voting. Not only that, now they're going, hey, we're going to bully you. We're going to tell you what to do or not to do in your own neighborhood when we come over here. Nah, it wasn't going down. It wasn't going down. So, uh, the first generation. And then, the second generation did nothing more than take what we built and ran with it. That's all. It was nothing new. They took the violence and ran with it. Because the first generation said, this is how we do it. And they ran with it. Third generation, the same way, took from the second and the first and ran with it. You know, that's, that's how this goes. Shit just goes on and on and on. And over a 40 year period, let's just say over a 45 year period, how many blacks have been killed? I'm gonna go back to this. How many blacks have you think been killed? Hundreds? A couple thousand? Huh. But you have to remember the decade of the 90s was labeled the decade of death because the county and the city combined had more than excess of a thousand murders a month. For every month. Of every year of that decade. Hmm. That's just that's just the 90s decade. What do you think about the 80s? Hmm. Well, about 77, 76 when the shit really started, when they really weren't keeping too many records, accurate records. What do you think then? Up until now. How many blacks you think been killed? Is the conflict going to ever stop? You know, we have to, uh, you know, we really have to ask ourselves, can we continue to survive the way we're doing it? Hmm. Because for one, we're doing ourselves no good, especially Crips, especially the brand. There's a much better way for you young brothers, a much better better way a lot of you have families hmm one day I know they, they don't want to get a knock on the door and say such and such a has been uh, been killed in gang activity and gang violence no for what no nah those, those conflicts we should be trying to resolve in a way that is satisfactory for everyone. And the only way to do that is respect the next man's right to do his thing in his his set, his land, his hood. And respect his right to be where he want to be from. And then maybe, then just maybe, we might hit upon something. But then, we got them cats that's going to advocate keeping the bullshit going. You know, which voice is going to be louder? Cease fire? Up. Up the fire. Which voice is going to be louder? You know, that's a, that's a hell of a subject. You know, and it goes back, you can touch on, oh, how old is told to be a gang member? Hmm. I was told to be a gang member. With that, I'll see you in a couple days. One love.